This is Jonathan Ferguson, the Keeper of Firearms and Artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And today he's taking a look at even more of the varied guns from hot dogs, horseshoes and hand grenades. Setting aside the um, graphic murder of a hot dog with, with bullet and bayonet, what we've got here is clearly not a real gun. If you want to see more of Jonathan reacting to video game firearms, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if there are any other games, guns or mechanics that you guys want to see Jonathan break down, let us know in the comment section below. If you'd like to help out the Royal Armouries and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. Okay, pause there. Once again, we see the SPAS-12 semi-automatic slash pump action shotgun. And another thing that excites me a bit about VR is the ability to aim like you would aim a, an actual firearm. What's great about potential for VR is that you can actually line up the front and the rear sight. So you're lining up the target with the front sight, with the rear sight, with your virtual eyeball. That's exactly how you aim a gun. Sounds obvious, but um, something that you don't get to do in most games. So that's that's where something like this that focuses on the realism of the manipulations and the SPAS looks pretty pretty well done. Uh, you've got a, a stock you can unfold and you'd want to if you're trying to actually aim with it. The loading was the only thing that raised an eyebrow because it kind of looked like a like a transparent Pez dispenser or something. But I, I'm guessing that's a, a limitation of how you how you manipulate things in, in VR. It looked like you can pick up a single cartridge and load that, but the standard load is almost like just a, a Pac-Man eating pills, pushing the, the cartridges into the loading port. You can't argue with a bit of dual wield pistols. Why not? Well, in reality, why not? Is because you'd miss. Quite enjoying the, the physics of press the magazine, catch the magazine drops out, where you're, you can actually see what's going on. It's not just a, a canned reloading animation. So this is a Glock, Glock 17 by the look of it. And then we <laughs> then pick up the uh, monstrosity with one of these aftermarket butt stocks on it and a drum magazine and a red dot sign. Again, not something you'd use in real life because it turns a compact, potentially conceivable, useful self-defense weapon into none of those things. Uh, so we've got a, a Smith & Wesson, I think it's a uh, model 686. So just like the single action, we see a really good depiction of how double action works. Double action is what this is and what the, the revolver you've, you've just seen in the game is. You can either fire it with the action of pulling through on the trigger, I'll just do it once on this one, or by cocking the hammer and firing it, which is more accurate, less disturbance of aim. That's double action. But because the single action trigger cocking gun has just disappeared, the meaning changed. And now it means a gun that, perf that um, performs a single action of cocking um, or the double action of cocking and firing. And that's, that's depicted really well. And we actually see the player ex experimenting with the trigger. So he's kind of part pulling the hammer back, seeing the hammer move back and then forward again. And the, ha the uh, cylinder is being part revolved. So in other words, just like all of these other VR guns, they're working like the real thing. We also see the reload, swing out cylinders on both of these models of Smith, of Smith & Wesson, press the latch, open the cylinder, and we see the player trying to encourage the empties out. But um, when brass is fired or steel in case of even, they do expand slightly and they tend to stay where they are. You need something to knock them out. What we then see the player do is hammer on the ejector and sure enough, the empties come flying out, just like the real thing. That's my cell phone. Pause there. So uh, setting aside the um, graphic murder of a hot dog with, <laughs> with bullet and bayonet, what we've got here is clearly not a real gun. I gather it's called the Kalashnikov, and uh, it's a highly improbable meld of an AK front end and a fully automatic Luger that has a shoulder stock designed into the back of it. Uh, what can I say other than why? I don't think it would work is the other thing I suppose I would say. 
what you'd have to do is mount the AK front end on some sort of bracket to the frame of the Luger and then just have the barrel floating in thin air aligned such that the bullet goes through the AK bore because Lugers work like other self-loading pistols many other self-loading pistols where the barrel actually recoils slightly so if you weld an AK barrel to the front of the Luger barrel it isn't going to work AR-15s, they're everywhere. They've clearly incorporated a good amount of modularity into this version, so you can change out different, different parts of it. It looks to function quite realistically with the suppressor, including lots of gas coming out of the, what I took to be the ejection port. The reloading was, was good. I like the, uh, the um, pretty successful John Wick flick there, ejecting the empty magazine out to the side in, in, with a dramatic flourish. I'm not sure about the uh, skeet shooting with loaded magazines. That would be ill-advised to try in reality. That's another first for me in video games. Probably wrong about this, but um, I certainly don't remember seeing adjustable sights where you can sort of lock onto the slider and change the, the actual setting of the sights. It's just, it's not something that's normally done. It's too detailed for a typical mainstream game. So we, we saw that on the, um, the Sturmgewehr. Some really good manipulations there with, of, so the cocking handle works as it ought to, the ejection port pops open as it comes back. And we saw some, some good uh, footage there of a, a cartridge being um, extracted back out of the chamber and going in. And if you cycle manually, the live cartridge flies out of the gun. Again, it's not something you can do in a typical 2D game. Pause there. The Bren gun is an iconic, like British light machine gun, except of course it's a Czech design. I like the the use of the bipod, the ability to rest that on a surface and use the bipod rather than either no bipod or a press X to mount gun system where it just kind of magically magnet uh, magnetizes to a nearby surface and you use it that way. Here, because of the ability to move things around in virtual space, you can literally plunk it on a wall and, and shoot. Uh, the reload's a little hard to judge because I can't see the hands and I'm not sure what's being sort of actuated to release the magazine. In real life, what the, the gunners were taught to do is reach up with the heel of the hand, hit the magazine catch, and sweep the magazine out of the magazine well in one smooth motion. But lots of debates about Bren guns and MG42s in, in the Second World War, but in reality, the effective rate of fire, if you're using the guns as they were intended to be used and could safely be used without wearing them out, was about the same, about 200 rounds per minute. Even though the cyclic rate was 600 approximately for the brand, which is pretty much what we see here. So it's, it's this is a clearly a very unreal situation that we're seeing the guns in, but within those limitations, we're seeing a lot of realism in how the guns are depicted. Pausing there. We've covered the, the Henry rifle in a, in a previous video. The game benefits from the inclusion of this in particular because of the unusual loading system with the uh, it's a tube magazine under the barrel, but you're loading it from the front and then you drop the rounds down the tube. So far, so correct. Where it goes a bit weird is the sort of unit of the multiples of ammunition you're putting in because they, they kind of magic their way into the feed sometimes, not all of the models seem to do it this way, but some of them are, sent, are sort of, you're, you're bringing the feed source to the gun, the gun is getting loaded, but they're not physically going in in the way that they would in real life. And so what we see is the cartridge is going in bullet first, which wouldn't wouldn't go well. You instantly jam as you cycle the action. If the first round that, is, that the weapon encounters is backwards. Pause there. That's a really nice Barrett. I like that. I, I think that the thing I noticed the most is the are the sound effects of shooting at long distance with a very powerful cartridge, where you've got sound echoing off the hillside. 
the way it's the way it's modeled it looks spot on the barrel it's the short recoil gun so the barrel is is moving backward a short distance the only thing holding you back in real life is upper body strength really because firing it from the shoulder like that people can do it i'm not one of them <laughs> um, yeah it looks, it looks good um dual dual wield them because why wouldn't you Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed that run through just some of the guns that are available in hot dogs, horseshoes and hand grenades, which I very much would like to play now. If you'd like to, we've got links in the description uh, to donate to the Royal Armouries Museum um, or perhaps even become a member. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next time.